And also, yeah. something else that's apparently not affected is a Dungeons and Dragons sequel moving forward, apparently. And for me, I'm like, this didn't even do that well. And I didn't, I'm, I mean, putting it all out there, I did not like this movie. Uh, really? I thought I didn't like it. I did not like it. I just couldn't get into it. I thought it was a little cheesy at times. I just didn't think the jokes hit a lot of times. Uh, Chris, Chris, uh, yeah, it I was mean, cheesy the entire time, Chris but I Pine, think that that's the point. I like Chris Pine. I feel like he sold the fuck out of these lines in the script, mm-hmm. but still. But you know this movie, okay? This movie they spent 150 million, 150 million dollars on this movie, right? They only made 208.2 million, so they barely made their money back. That's not even advertising, advertising the included. So they, they did them right. Then it was it was a loss, yeah. right? It was a probably loss. a yeah. loss, or, or yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the studio head was actually saying, uh, it was Brian Robbins, who's Paramount Pictures CEO, said that the idea is they want to actually attach, they do everybody come back because the fans are such like, they're so excited about this, but he wants to cut the budget down tremendously, he said. Make it like under $100 million, and then that's the second one will make money, and they want to dive more into like the characters dealing with more magic, and maybe Chris, uh, I was Chris, uh, I would say Chris Pratt, because Chris Pratt's everywhere, but Chris Pine would maybe be delve into magic finally and do something like that and really grow in the characters delving into the D&D realm. But cutting that budget back would save them money. Then they would actually maybe come out ahead as opposed to losing money. But when you have a franchise like this, we have a huge core fan base, right? I just love D&D. And the first movie they did before was like horrible, didn't do well at all. This one actually remotely did well. So they're like, maybe we should just keep going down this right path and make it work. But you already lost. So like, we wanted to get to a point where we just like stop and say, let's not do this and let's just move forward. Mike, what do you think? I mean, you're a big D&D fan. Did you see this movie? And do you think that it actually was relatable to the fans? And is it worth a sequel? Did you did you write up a banner for me that says D and D fan? I wish I did. I wish I did. I'm, I'm astonished. Sense. I I I love this movie. I thought it, I thought it was incredible, Brian. You you weren't you weren't a fan. How, let me ask you this: How many times have fan. you played? How many times have you played Dungeons oh. and Dragons in your life? Great. Uh, uh, one time. I've only launched magic missile one time in my life. So, uh, yeah, not 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 there. There we go. Why. Dude, I had a whole I had a whole little diatribe written up here about like, oh, they're gonna do a sequel. Like I thought the first one bombed. It's a big swing, massive swing, but it connected, knocked it out of the park. Just not with the audience. <laughs> was, uh, I, I enjoyed it. Right away, huh? I, I, I don't know how much D and D Sean has played, but that shit connected with me so hard. It was funny and goofy, and you're trying to find creative ways to beat up monsters. It's everything that uh, an actual campaign of D and D is. I was really surprised that it didn't uh, it wasn't more successful at the box office because the other thing yeah. is the level of polish on it that that thing was glistening it was it was gorgeous and the, a lot of money um, the, you're, you're you're right like but Brian if if like if your criticisms are it was cheesy and the jokes were bad like you know same as me we gotta also, look in the, we gotta look in the mirror sometimes buddy it's, it's true it's true i i get it but i even like the whole thing about like taking the daughter and like making him a like, huge granddaughter and and then changing her whole perspective of the dad i don't know i just right. i guess I, I just wasn't into the whole family dynamic right, that that's, it was. That's, that's the thing because they're, they're not trying to do like an actual interesting hollywood story they're just they're just doing plot hooks to, to yeah, motivate, motivate the, motivate the you can have jokes like, you know uh, no one said I, magic missile once not uh, once that's a good that's now the, that's a good phrase <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, yeah, I, I, dude, I don't. I don't think it'll happen. It didn't make enough money. The only thing that I, the yeah. only way that I can see this happening is because uh, during COVID, the D and D podcast phenomenon happened, and all of a sudden, Hasbro is printing money. They are printing money left and right. Um, so they might be able to subsidize uh, a little bit more than what the movie going public. Uh, wanted we until we get it. Maybe we we need it shoved down our throat. Which in this case. I wouldn't mind. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, Maybe. It's, it's, it's what Hollywood does with things that apparently people are liking. I mean, you know, we just saw the release of Baldur's Gate 3, which is pretty much as close to a true, like, D&D, like, adventure video game as we'll ever get maybe um like it, it's been received very well it's doing very well from you know not that large of a video game studio and and like mike said like i think it's yeah it's just it, it's they're you looking for fan, properties Shana. what was that 
You were a fan? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, I, I've, I've played a couple campaigns. Uh, I've done a few things down the day. Um, you know, you can't see this. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll go a little behind the curtain here for everybody watching. But uh, Mike, me and Brian, uh, there was a there was a and d sketch that we did in college. And I may or may not have just sent them the link to relive the fun, uh, you know. Uh, nice. but, <laughs> I'm but all I'm is, darkness. Yeah, exactly. Right, die darkness, die. That was your line. Look at that. You remember? <laughs> and I got to yell never. It was a good time. <laughs> but no, I think the, I think D and D and D is approachable. It's more. It's 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 never been more mainstream. I guess is like the way I want to say it. And like, yeah, it it had a big glow up during the pandemic because you could do it remote and still feel connected to people. And uh, I still think it's a uh, it's it's a platform that is you know in an infinite number of stories can be told, and there's just nothing but potential for this kind of stuff. So I'm not surprised <laughs> that they're working on a sequel. I'm gonna tell you though, Sean, you're gonna have a whole different perspective from Sabrina right now. Sabrina, okay. what do you think about this sequel happening? Do you think that you're as thrilled as these two guys are? This is going down, <laughs> or are you? Because uh, you did like Chris. Uh, oh, I was gonna call him Chris Pratt. Chris Pine. He's just Pine. Chris is. He's just a it's Chris. Pine. What do you think, Sabrina? Uh, yeah, no, um, uh, I just, it's not, I've never played, uh, D&D, I don't really know anything about it at all, and I was just slightly surprised by something that's based on Dungeons and Dragons, that there was no Dungeons and one dragon who was, like, barely <laughs> able to do much, but, like, slosh around because he was obese. The Dungeons are metaphorical. I don't, it's the Dungeon I don't, of your mind. Thank you. I'm just, <laughs> Just think, one not knowing anything about the movie, if you roll into the film and you see one half ass dragon who can barely like blow some fire, and then there's no dungeons, and uh, it's just, it was just, I was surprising. I did, I did, I expected a little bit more dragon action, I guess. Um, the whole like criminal aspect of it, I thought was like kind of meh. Uh, Michelle Rodriguez, uh, who I think is a terrible actress, seemed right at home being terrible in this movie. Um, she like, it, it really fair, works fair, for her. Fair, um, fair. I did Bradley Cooper, little little Bradley Cooper. He was a, a highlight for me. Chris Pine, oh, it, I, all it, very you know he he was he was great. He was very entertaining. Um, really immersed himself in it. Um, so that was great. I, I didn't mind. Brian hated this guy, but I didn't mind the uh, the gentleman from uh, Bridgerton. Uh, I hated Bridgerton. Yeah, I thought he was quite funny too. But it just uh, it, it, it was like there were the yeah. actors I thought were mostly good. Like I liked the elf girl. I, I even liked them the goofy magic kid who couldn't get shit right. Like, but but I just didn't like all together. Sorry about that. All together, it just like it just didn't flow for me. Like independently, like the scene with Bradley Cooper and the tiny chair, I enjoyed. Like you know the scene when uh, the that. Bridgerton guy showed up, I enjoyed. Or the scene when the Bridgerton guy left, I enjoyed. Like there were things I enjoyed, but there were also a lot of things. It just didn't seem to flow for me in in the right way. But maybe that's just because I don't know anything about Dungeons and Dragons. I don't know. Um, but I feel like there was like a lot. If if they could have maybe also at the end, like defeating that witch lady was oh, kind of ridiculous. Kate like that whole Looks like Kate McKenna to me. Oh my gosh, she was a nightmare. I just I don't know that whole thing. I, but is that like a real person? Like in the in the game? I don't know. And she's like they're like oh take this hand and then this hand is battling. This hand. It was and also I love Hugh Grant, but I did not care for him in this at all. Like, I don't know. It just wasn't, it just wasn't for me. I didn't, you know, it's not, I, I didn't vehemently despise it as I do some movies, but it was not great for me. I'm going to blow your mind for a minute. <laughs> I didn't see it at all. Oh, shit. Nice. There you go. got it just from the trailer. <laughs> he understood the message. I didn't need to see it. I understood what they were doing, and I said, Go, go get them, guys. They did it, Sean. They, they <laughs> actually <laughs> delivered exactly on the promise that they made. Yeah, that's it's, it. That's it's, all I needed to it's see. It's a pile of shit. I mean, there might be some good stuff in there. I <laughs> think that we honestly uh, explain that the deviation between our opinions here probably yeah. explain why there's a positive view. And negative like, for it. What, it's, got, it's got a 90 on Rotten Tomatoes. It's one of the best movies got, of 2023. Right? Wow. Yeah. Um, but I guess, like, maybe oh. if you're expecting... 
continuity of story. Like, like, getting if you're not just expecting just some goofy bullshit of people like trying and failing and doing shitty bad jobs at things, which yeah. is like, if you know D&D, that's what you expect going in. I guess. I mean, I did. The, one of my coworkers uh, likes D and D, and he liked the movie. And everyone that he knows that, like, you know, like I think if you're if you exactly. are familiar with that world, that it lands differently for sure. Yeah, yeah, uh, and it, it did. Like you're like Mike was saying, great ratings on Rotten Tomatoes. People have been loving the audience, but it didn't do that well. And you know that's what happens. People, you know, the the expectations are up to here, but then people don't go to see it sometimes because like. You know, they have like a bad taste in their mouth in the last one, or maybe their people are just not, not going to theaters right now because people are not doing a lot of stuff right now because there is still a WGA strike happening, everybody. <laughs>